All right, so next stage of the project, got a machine coming out here. We're going to start some of the storm water. So the guys are over here now, just getting ready to unload it all. I'll show you that coming off and what we're going to do with it. Alright, so we got the plumbers back today. We're going to be doing our drainage. I'm going to be helping them dig some of this out. I've got the little machine there. And this is the area where we started last time, or where we left off actually. The guys left provisions in the corner here. And now we've just got to tap into that storm water and take it around the rest of the house. But in saying that, I don't have the best track record with pipes or hitting pipes. So I've got the shovel. I'm going to dig down and find that pipe before I hit it with the excavator. <laughs> This is what happens when you have a rookie operator. God damn it, I was trying so hard not to bloody get too close and then just wasn't looking and lifted it up to flick that out. Hit it. Expensive mistake. Roof plumber's got to come back. Round two. Alright, we've got our doctors back today, putting the drainage in. Paid as much as doctors, these guys. <laughs> Stormwater's coming along well. Hit a bit of rock through the middle here, but we're starting to backfill it all. The guy's got a 150 line that's coming up through the middle here. All right, so the final stages of this uh, excavation, you can see here, this one's as straight as a gun barrel. Absolutely the straightest trench you'll ever see in your life. Isn't that right? <laughs> and then over here, we're just pulling up some of the old road base from where the caravan was. So I don't know if you remember, but we had it out the back here, and we built that up so that the water could get away, and we had a bit of fake turf and everything down. So now I'm gonna scratch up that road base there and probably put it over the back, maybe put a bit of drainage through underneath where a little road goes, and probably just relocate that going up to the, up to the valley there. It's probably the plan, then a bit of topsoil and a bit more grass. Another hit with the machine. So I think I've got a, two gutters, a fascia, a stormwater pipe, electrical cable, and the plumber's tape measure. <laughs> so I'm on, a, I'm on a roll. I don't know if I should be operating this thing or not. I should leave it up to plumbers.
All right, so all the plumbing drainage is in now. I've started backfilling around the house. I'm just doing the last little bit of tidy up here to see if I can level some of this out and just get good falls away from the house so that if you do get any drainage issues, you've always got water that's escaping away from the footings. That's what you want to try and do is either have a footpath or good drainage around your house so that water doesn't pond back towards all your structural footings and things like that. So yep, what I do now is just jump on that and keep tidying it up. Okay, now that the plumber's got all the stormwater drainage in, I'm going to drop over the edge down here and get all this pad level for where our two stormwater tanks are going to go. So there's a bit of cut and fill in there and it's quite steep, so I'll drop over the bank and just start chipping away at it. <laughs> All right, so there's the house. This is where our stormwater lines come down. And I guess out to that lower level, you can see where the machine is down there. That's the area where I need to cut a pad level. So uh, I want to get probably 20,000 litre tanks or 22,000 litre tanks, maybe even three if I can fit them. So that's the basic sort of bench or the rough cut. I've just done that so they can get an idea of where my tanks are actually going to sit. Now the tanks themselves are three and a half meters, so I want to have probably a little bit more, maybe four meters, just so that I can get around with that. Yeah, so that's pretty much spot on four meters right here. What I really want to try and make sure I've got is more of the tank sitting on the cut than I have on the fill, probably at least three quarters, which here I should have. You can see the natural ground levels probably finishes about here. So what I'll do now, I'll set up the laser, I'll bench it all properly, cut this nice and level, and then from there we bring in uh, either some crusher grit to put on the top or some five mil aggregate to put down, just so you've got a nice level area for where the tanks are gonna sit and uh, that also water can get away and it doesn't permeate sort of into this clay area. So, time to level and then I'll keep cutting out. All right, so watch this space. I'll finish filling this in and then tanks come next. Okay, so the stage we're at now is this is the last day with the machine. I've done pretty much everything out here in regards to backfilling for the, all the plumbing storm water. You can sort of see behind me, I've run around the whole house, backfilled all the trenches, compacted over it all, and really tried to get everything down nice and, nice and flat and level. Taken out all sort of the high spots, had the old tree stump there from the original house pad. I had that sitting over the side, I've just dropped that up here and tidied it up and taken a few limbs off it just for a bit of a seat for the moment. I'll eventually get a bobcat or something up here and throw some topsoil and some grass seed down, really just to get all this going again. But at the moment, luckily there's been no rain so it's not too muddy, but if it does rain, that's what's gonna happen. But other than that, everything's sort of come up pretty good around here, all the levels have come up quite nice. Like I said, I've taken the pad down from where the caravan was originally up here, and I've put in a road over there, which I'll show you, which goes up to the top paddock. Now, the last thing that I need to do is the pad down here for the water tanks. So that'll be just doing the final cut, just benching it and getting it nice and level, and then putting the crusher dust, and then some of this um, aggregate down there as well too, for like a, a bit of a filter, a bit of a silt sock. But I'll take over here, you can see, like I said, this is where I put all the road base from the caravan that we originally had under here that was out the back. And I picked up a nice little poly pipe as well too. All the drainage, like once this mulch, this mulch is the last thing that needs to go up to that sprinkler system up there. But there is a nice bit of drainage that comes down around this bank. You can see that poly pipe that then runs under the road and down. Then I'll just make a bit of drainage out this end to cut down through here, through that mulch, and then just sort of direct it down to the paddock 
down through there. But for now, what I'm gonna do is actually just cut back the last of this weed here for the final time. And I've got some weed mat that I'm gonna put down. And then once that weed mat goes down, then I'm gonna plant that out with like some lamandra grass or something like that, just so that it's low maintenance. Water tanks are there. I don't wanna have to come back here all the time and have to keep slashing. So there you go. There's a bit of a walk through. You can sort of see where we're up to now with the project starting to take shape. Next up will be cladding, but these are the final little touches to sort of start presenting it and getting it looking well. Now that I've got the pad benched out, the next thing I want to try and do is get this ag drain right around the back, just so that any surface water that comes down from this embankment here gets trapped and then can just get away. So I'll dig that out now, and then I'll put a bit of crushed aggregate over the top of it, the five mil blue metal, and then we'll bring the crusher dust down here ready to level this pad out. Okay, so I've got all the blue metal down around the base there. It was a bit of a mission trying to push it down the hill. I didn't really want to bring the machine back down because it's starting to rain now. Once I get it down, it's really difficult to get up some of these slopes. But um, yeah, so that's all, all in all the way around the base. It's got a good amount of coverage. There's a bit left over here that I'll probably just put through the base of the slab once I bring this crusher dust down. I'll spread that out. And now next I'll try and put, do the same thing. Push that crusher dust down over the edge of the machine and then I'll just have to sort of shovel it down here and for now, that's uh, that's about it. Hey, and do you like the uh, the pink headphones? <laughs> Broke my other one, so uh, stole my daughter's. Anyway, back on the machine. I think it's looking pretty good. It's taking shape nicely. All right, so the next stage now is to put some temporary downpipes on. You've seen that I've got all the storm water in, it's all backfilled, but because I've been running around the machine and we've dug up fresh dirt, it is quite boggy around the building. We haven't had much rain, so we're pretty lucky. But by putting these temporary downpipes, these plastic ones on from the outlets down to the actual storm water, will allow us to get all our cladding on and then not have to work if it does rain, which we're actually forecasted to get a bit actually later this afternoon and for the next week. It'll just divert a lot of that water that's going to run straight down, cause the puddles and cause a lot of mud, and just keep under the eave a little bit dry so we can work in a little bit of comfort around the whole building. So time to pop these on.
you can see here, here's, here's a good example of what actually happens, how boggy and sloppy it gets outside of these, especially because the trenches have just been sort of dug up. So a lot of the soil that's over it is quite fresh. And that's really just from say a week or so of um, digging this up and then the condensation that's dropping off the roof. We might've had one or two nights worth of rain, but yeah, it gets quite sloppy. So anything we can do to keep that away from these newly dug trenches is gonna make a bit of a difference. Yeah, and here's another corner that's quite quite boggy. It'd be good just to keep the water away from that. And what I'll also do is find these low spots and chuck a bit more road base over them just to pack them up. The other thing I like to do is just carry around a little bucket with me just to put the scraps from when I uh, cut the actual downpipes. Just these little bits of plastic and stuff like that, just to save them blowing away. We are quite up high up here on the ridge and the winds come through at night. So if you don't pick that sort of stuff up, it just blows in the next the neighbor's paddock. And plus this way, you can easily just chuck in the recycling bin and you're done. So now that those downpipes are hooked up, you can see here, this is where they're coming out, ready to join up to where our tanks are gonna go down the bottom. So what that's gonna do, that's gonna collect all the water. This is gonna shoot out here and the chances are that it could actually wash away part of that pad. So what I'm gonna do is just extend off here and maybe try and divert it out to the side. Like we've got it going out here so the plumber can actually just join straight into the top of the tanks. But um, what we'll do now is try and just divert that somehow, maybe with some connections and some of that temporary plastic to get it away. All right, so there you go guys, that completes all of our stormwater drainage. It's now in and underground. Next step's gonna be to landscape out here, grass down and sort of tidy up this whole backyard. But for now, hope you guys enjoyed that video. Coming up next, what you're gonna see is all our cladding going on. And then after that, we're gonna move inside the house and start fitting the place out. So exciting times. So thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. Like or subscribe if you're new. And don't forget to follow us on all our social media channels as well. All right, cheers guys, I'll catch you next time.